Today on Twin Cam, we are going to be doing some bodywork and generally repairing my own mess. If you've been watching my channel for over a year, you might remember this time last year when I resprayed quite a bit of Melvin's rear end. Unfortunately, I wasn't very good at spraying at that point and I hadn't done any kind of research and hadn't had any kind of practice and so the result was dreadful. Well, it looked all right when I first did it, but fast forward about six months or so and it started to look worse for wears. And now, as I said, we're back at square one. So today we are going to be spraying the entire rear valance of my 1991 Rover Metro, affectionately known as Melvin, and we're going to be doing some work on the rear arches as well. Don't be expecting anything professional because, well, I'm me. And second of all, this car really does need a little bit of welding around those rear wheel arches, but for now, I'm just going to be making them look presentable. But before we can get to all of that, Melvin needs a bloody good clean. Well, that was quick. Don't you love snow foam? Anyway, now Melvin's been sat for a couple of days drying out and we need to take off the rear bumper. This 1.1C bumper is in three sections, the centre part of which is metal. And there are four bolts holding the bumper to the car. Two of them are at the sides and connect to the plastic sections. And then there are two in the centre which hold on the big metal centre section. Once these are removed, it is a simple case of pulling off the bumper. Oh, fog lamp. At least it is once I've unplugged the fog lamp. Now, with the bumper off, I'm in two minds as to whether to actually respray this. You see, while it might look to you on camera like it's in half decent condition, it's actually quite scratched this metal centre section here, and the bits on the end have overspray on them, and generally they're not very nice anymore. A bit of back to black covers a multitude of sins, but um, yeah, I'm not so sure. While it's off the car, it might be prudent to actually respray this, and having just said that, I've noticed a little chip in it, so I think that's confirmed. This is going to be resprayed. Before we can get to that, though, we need to continue stripping down the car, starting with the rear lamps. These are held in with two simple wing nuts, making bulb changing really, really easy. It also makes stripping the car down for rust repairs easy, and considering it's a Metro, you're probably going to be doing more of that than you are of changing bulbs. The final thing to come off is the lower boot seal, because otherwise that would just be coated in overspray. I'll probably get overspray on something else, but, you know, at least I'm trying not to. Then comes the slightly tedious process of masking. This can be quite satisfying, but when you are completely incompetent, as I am, it just becomes very tedious very quickly. Can you tell that I've absolutely never done this before in my life? And considering the amount of masking tape I had to use, you can absolutely now tell that I have never done this before. Other things that needed masking up included the holes in the rear valance for fog lamp wiring and just the other random holes that Rovers seem to like to put in their panels. One slightly more curious hole is this one in the centre of the valance. This would have housed the number plate lamp wiring on an A-series Metro, but on a K-series, it is redundant. Another place that needs masking is the gap where the boot seal used to be. 
And this gap is so big because Rover actually made the rear panel on a K-Series Metro that little bit bigger and more bubbly. With all those little bits taken care of and the main part of the boot lid masked up, we are now finished. Now if you're wondering exactly what the problem is and why I'm doing all this spraying, well, it's stuff like this that's the problem. No, it's not shocking, but it's not exactly good either. Based on that previous shot, you're probably wondering why I haven't done any kind of masking around the wheels or the underside of the car. And the answer to that is very simple. It's because I'm going to be under sealing the entire rear half of the car at the same kind of time I'm doing this. It'll probably be in another video though. Though don't hold me to that. But in order to get better access to the underside of the car and also to get better access to that rear lip, which was the problem area last time, I'm going to jack up the car and take the wheels off. Well, with all the tedious business of masking done, I think it's time to start sanding. The objective of our sanding here is to simply remove all the loose paint and rust and provide a good key for the primer to adhere to. Once that's complete, I'm applying rust converter, which will stabilize the steel before we start attacking the car with the aerosols. The worst area is on the offside arch, which shows just why these arches need replacing. But what I'm doing here should hold it off for a little while at least. Well, welcome to day two. Um, I started a little bit too late yesterday and so only managed to get masking and sanding and a bit of rust converter applied. So um, now we're actually going to spray some primer. I hate masking and sanding. I think they are two of the most unenjoyable activities in the world. And so yesterday was not very fun and um, I'm not very good at it, especially when um, some real work is probably going to be actually needed in the next couple of years. Anyway, now onto the fun bit. I'm starting with a few coats of etch primer on the previously rusty sections so that it etches into the metal, providing a good bond. Once that's on, I'm going over the whole panel in white primer. So we're very, very nearly finished with all the boring stuff. I just need to block back this primer and then we can get to actually doing some painting. But before we do that, there are a couple of things that I just want to tell you. First of all, this is not the best job. Um, I'm actually a little bit disappointed with what I've been doing, um, just in the quality of how everything's come out. Um, I'm not quite as hopeful as I was when I first started this, but that's okay. First of all, because I found some very, very little holes in it, and I'm starting to come to terms with the fact that this is only going to last a year, maybe two years max, before the rear valance is just pulled off and replaced with a new one. So, you know, that's made me feel a little bit better about it all. Second of all, I cannot wait for the barbers to reopen because look at the state of this. And um, third of all, there's a wasp in here and that's annoying me. But also fourth thing and probably the most important thing that you may be able to notice, I've run out of white primer <laughs> and um, because my local branch of Halfords has just been closed, I cannot be bothered to do the 50 odd minute round trip it would take to get me there. So. Um, there's plenty of primer on it, but I put some etch primer down first, which is obviously grey, and then tried to cover over it with white primer. Um, so it's not perfect, but it's okay, it's fine. I'm sure that once it gets blocked back, it won't be too thin, um, and I can apply the paint, but I'm going to be applying a lot of paint because I've got a lot of paint. Um, hopefully it'll all be okay. Now come the really critical bits. Once I'm happy with this surface, we can actually spray the colour. Now 
These spray cans have been mixed up by a company local to me called Colortone in Melvin's lovely Rover White Diamond. You'll notice that I've left two sections of the boot lid exposed, and that's because there were some imperfections and chips that I felt it sensible to address while we're in this position. If you were wondering, I haven't taken the number plate off because first of all it's stuck on, and second of all, I do not want to risk breaking what is Melvin's original dealer plate from back in 1991. Well, Melvin is now resplendent in multiple layers of white diamond, and he's been sitting here for a couple of days just to let it initially harden ever so slightly. This is all going to be wet sanded eventually, um, so this isn't a proper indication of what it will finally look like, but at the moment, it looks really good. It looks a heck of a lot better than I was worrying about it looking a couple of days ago or a couple of minutes ago for you, so I'm dead happy. But let's see what kind of horrors lie when we remove the masking and actually look at it compared to the old colour. As far as I'm concerned, masking is the best use for British newspapers, and whichever is the cheapest is my automatic favourite. Unless it's the sun. This is possibly the most satisfying part of the job, especially a section like this within the rear lamp aperture. The final large section of masking to remove is the temporary replacement for the boot seal. And then we have a very fresh looking Melvin. You can see here where I've sprayed, though to be honest, the camera picks up more imperfections. Shining a light over the section makes it clear why we need to do some wet sanding in order to finish it off. I have managed to get some overspray on the Metro badge, but that's no big problem. They're readily available brand new. Well, I'm dead happy with the way this painting has turned out. It still needs to be wet sanded and the car is filthy dusty. But, off camera, I've been doing a little bit of under sealing and I decided not to show you any of this, even though originally I was, because it's just going to cause loads of arguments in the YouTube comments. So, all you're going to see is a shot of the shiny black spare wheel well. I'm not even going to tell you what I used because, again, it'll just cause arguments, but I've given it the best possible opportunity because this car has been sat in the garage for well over a week and he's still going to be sat in the garage or just outside the garage for a few more days. So I'm giving the underseal the best possible chance of, you know, sitting right on the car, not letting any water underneath it, etc, etc. I've also been doing quite a bit of cavity waxing, but um, due to the nature of this garage, um, the size constraints and the lighting constraints, I've decided I'm not going to bother showing you any of that as well. Also, I ran out, so I'm going to need to get another bottle of it and um, carry on doing this side of the car. I've already done this side. Um, but for now, before we do the wet sanding, it's time to finally get Melvin down off these stands. He must have been up here for nearly two weeks now. Fast forward a few more days and I have had a haircut, which is nice, but I've also plucked up the courage to finally start doing some wet sanding. Just after shot over there, I have a bucket full of warm and ever so slightly soapy water with some sandpaper in. I've gone for two and a half thousand grit and I'm only going over it once. Most of the things I see about wet sanding, obviously I've never done this before, just a quick note, um, start with much heavier grits than that and then move their way up. Um, I'm starting at a very high grit because I'm really, really scared. So 
Yeah, I've gone over this and cleaned it, made sure it's free of any dust and all that kind of stuff. Although I think I might need to go, go over some of this again. But yeah, um, let's start wet sanding. I'm not very confident, but um, needs to be done. Well, I turned the camera off and I kept working away on it and it looks a lot better, but I'm giving up now because I think I've reached the limit of my uh, confidence with this. Um, I could go further. I've been told by a number of friends that if I just keep going, it will get better and I will get there. But I'm at a point now where this is smoother. This is a lot nicer than it was when I first started. Uh, not quite so much down here. I've not really concentrated on this because I'd rather it just be solid and it just be you know, it just work as paint. I haven't, I have unfortunately gone through just on one spot here, um, where there is one of the spot welds for the rear end. Um, so I might need to end up addressing that, but that's my own fault really. Whereas up here, uh, where I've been a lot lighter, maybe as light as I should have been all the way through, um, this is much nicer than it was. With a good polish um, and some good wax and all that kind of stuff, this is gonna come up much, much better. But for now, I'm at my limit. I don't wanna go much further because you know, there's, there's risk involved with this. I don't want to jeopardise all that work I've put in so far. So this is kind of it. I have a new Metro badge to go on. I wasn't so bothered about getting paint on that because it was already a bit icky. So I've got one of them waiting to go on, but I'm not going to put it on yet because I'm also not going to put the bumper on yet because um, of course, as I said before, we're going to go and spray the bumper, but I'll do that in another video. So this is what Melvin looks like now. Um, I'm really, really pleased with it. Not perfect. You know, if you took this to, to a paint shop, um, they'd say it was a dreadful paint job. Um, but for somebody who's never like done any kind of painting on this scale before, it's really good. So the point of this really is that if you have a car like this, a car that you absolutely love, you're never going to sell. It's not going to affect the value of the car because at the moment, this car is worth to me everything you know I'm, I'm never selling this car so it's worth nothing it's worth what i paid for it and nothing more um why not have a go <laughs> you know there's no there's no point um spending loads of money and not learning something out of it so um I, I just felt this is something i could tackle so i've given it a go so why don't you do that too um so in the next melvin video we will be spraying the bumper hopefully that can't be a guarantee because there are other things going on with this car so um maybe that maybe something else but thank you very very much for watching if you enjoyed the video please do give it a thumbs up and um, comment and if you're feeling really generous maybe even subscribe as well and i'll have more videos coming along soon